you know what, guys? I really want Angel Shield to come back. I do. I think it looks really good. But after the season finale of Agent Carter, I really don't want it to end. <laughs> hey, guys. It's Kevin again. This is my review for the season finale of Agent Carter, season one, episode eight, Valdiction. And as I said, as much as I want Angel Shield to come back next week, I am looking forward to it. Agent Carter is kicking Angel Shield's ass right now. This episode was amazing. This episode was epic. It was crazy. There was so much going on. And that ending, just, there needs to be a season two. There needs to be season two. They pretty much confirmed there will be. They said that there probably will be. They just haven't officially renewed it yet. I'm assuming there will be, because this show's been so popular. There's no way that it is not coming back. There's no way. Um, let's get into this episode, because it was extremely crazy, and I loved everything about this episode. So, here we go. So, we start off with the Captain America radio show. It goes back on the air. It's really cheesy. Um, just, just seeing that radio show, so cheesy. But the police cordon off the theater where the massacre took place, and Peggy, Jack, and Sousa arrive, and Detective Pentergast tells them that there are 47 dead and no survivors. The Ainge examine the bodies, and they realize that the moviegoers actually killed each other, which is kind of like Kingsman. If you guys have seen Kingsman, The Secret Service, you know um, Lucifer Valentine, how he wanted to kill the weak from the strawn? That's kind of what Evgenko and Dottie are doing. So, in the theater, Sousa finds Dottie's baby carriage and the gas canister nearby and realizes that it's connected to the slaughter. He, you know, he, he knows how somehow it's connecting. He discharges a bit of into his face by accident. When Jack and Peggy come over, Sousa attacks Jack and Peggy tries to pull him away. Sousa shoves him her back and an officer clubs Daniel, uh, clubs Sousa unconscious. So, basically, what this does, it's this weird gas that basically just makes you violent and want to kill the person near you. It's pretty crazy, I have to say. Definitely very crazy, but it was really just a crazy scene and a great way to start the episode. So, Dottie drives Evgenko through the city, and Evgenko says that it's a place to envy, and a police car pulls him over, and Dottie reaches for her gun until Evgenko stops her, because Officer Pike comes over and points out that Dottie missed a traffic light, and she is com being completely innocent. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know this was going to happen. Like, she's being, like, the most innocent person ever. Almost on Jane the Virgin, how when she's, you know, when Rose was being so innocent. I gotta say, this actress is so good at being a villain. She just, I've said it before, she's an awesome villain, and she's so good on both Agent Carter, Agent Carter and Jane the Virgin. That's the one thing I'm looking forward to. At least I'll be, still be able to see this girl on Jane the Virgin because she is awesome. So, she claims that Jenko is her grandfather and he can't drive because of a wartime injury. And Pike sends her on her way and returns to his car. He bought it all. And just as an APB about Dottie's vehicle is reported, he turns back to the car. And Dottie's waiting with her garden drawn because she knows that an APB is on her. So, Sousa wakes up strapped to a hospital bed. He confirms that he's okay, and Peggy explains what happened. And Daniel and, uh, Su I mean, Sousa, Sousa admits that under the gas influence, he wanted to kill everybody, and he apologized for hitting her. And <clears throat> Peggy assures him that she understands. They return to SSR headquarters where Jack is briefing his agents. And so, yeah, Sousa knows what happened, everything. Basically, Jack is briefing his agents, and he warns that if Jenko has 10 canisters of the gas, and Peggy figures that if Jenko has a specific target. And Howard comes in, and Howard is back in this episode. I gotta say, it was awesome to see Howard Stark in this episode. Awesome to see. And Jarvis is there, too, and says the target is him. And Jack puts Howard under arrest and demands answers, pointing out that the agent that they've lost, and <clears throat> basically, Howard's... Because, of course, they don't trust Howard right now. They know that Howard endorsed this product. They know that Howard um, was working with Dottie and Evgenko. However, all is revealed... In this episode, so Howard says that he will come back. He came back with his fly files about the Battle of Fennel and says that the deaths that are on him as well caused psychosis. And Howard mouthballed it. And McGinnis took all the samples and research. And McGinnis then dropped it on the Russians to take to help take out the enemy. And Howard flew there and saw what happened. He notes that the gas caused asphyxiation. And Peggy figures that if Jenko performed. Uh, Laren and Tommy procedures on Brannis and Green Suit. Evgenko is actually jo Johan uh, Fenhoff, who is an expert in hypnosis, which explains why Evgenko is so good in hypnosis. In hypnosis, because he's at, his name is actually Johan Fenhoff. So they figure that's how he got to Roger, and who we actually don't see in this episode. That was really my only complaint about this episode is that we did not see Roger. But I guess in season two, we'll see Roger. I mean, he's trying to figure out things with his wife, and he's still under hypnosis, though, so that's kind of weird. So Howard says that he'll be the bait because if Jenko wants him, and Jack agrees and says that they need some public, something public. So Dottie drives to a private airfield as Dottie deals with the, gr with the crown, with the ground crewman in charge, and the radio announces that Howard is in New York announcing a major breakthrough in the case of her missing technology. And when Dottie returns, if Jenko tells her that a new opportunity has arisen and they're going back to New York, 
So that was really interesting. So Howard is busy prepping for a speech when Peggy comes in with bulletproof armor. He dismisses it as junk. It's kind of a funny scene. He has Peggy take him to a lab to get his weapon technology. She wonders what he hopes to accomplish. And Howard points out that there's no other way to lure Evgenko out. And when Peggy wonders why he's risking his life, Howard says he's trying to redeem himself after what she said to him. After what she said about him. So... I like that he is doing that because he should be trying to redeem himself. I mean, especially the whole thing with Steve's blood and how he knew where Steve's blood was and how upset that made Peggy. She's still kind of irritated. She goes out and Howard follows her after grabbing the ball, holding the sample of Steve's blood. And the SSR holds a public press conference and Jack declares Howard innocent of all charges because he is innocent. And Peggy's nearby looking for Ochenko while Howard prods Jack into calling him a hero. Howard speaks up to speak and someone takes a shot at him. Jack pulls Howard down while Sousa and Peggy place the shots from a nearby hotel. And Jarvis takes Howard to a police car and has the officer inside take Howard to SSR headquarters. However, Jarvis spots two unconscious policemen nearby. And that, that was definitely really crazy. So in the car, Pike tells Howard that if Jenko wants to see him, and Jarvis um, Jarvis runs back and tells Dan tells Sousa what happened. So Peggy and Jack break into the hotel and find an automated rifle set to fire in Howard's direction. So basically, if Jenko set up a, a trap to kill Howard, and she realized that the gun was designed to miss, and the whole thing was actually just a diversion. So they basically just went through that whole thing for nothing. So Sousa calls on the war on the radio to warn his fellow agents that Howard has been abducted and he's been kidnapped, and Howard tries to bribe Pike, but he doesn't respond. So as they leave, Peggy figures that if Jenko has a fate worse than death planned, and when she said them like he's gonna hypnotize him, that's what he's gonna do, because that's what Jenko's doing to everyone. He's hypnotizing him to make it seem like they're on his side. So Jack says that the theater was a test and wonders why they would go that after that is bigger and soldiers walk past in the street and Peggy realizes that it's VE day, which of course is the day where everyone's going to go crazy and all this mayhem's going to happen, kind of like Kingsman, as I said. So if Jenko plans to hit Times Square and Dan and Sousa and, and Jarvis find Pike's car and discover that he's actually dead at the wheel and there's no sign of Howard, so they have no idea where he went, so... Uh, Sousa, and so basically if Jenko drives Howard through the city while Dottie holds a gun on him in the back seat, and she says that they spend a nice weekend together and then pistol whips him, and Sousa canvasses the area and finds a witness who saw Dottie put Howard in a blank car, and they were last seen heading out of town. So Jack reports that the city authorities won't call off the VE celebration, and the SSR shut all of them down, all public airports and public airfields. But Jarvis says that if Jenko plans to use one of Howard's private airplanes to incriminate him, and the butler admits that there's a second vault lower than the first. So we then cut to six months earlier where Howard showed Dottie his private vault filled with experimental vehicles. She just seemed like this girl was interested, and she basically made it seem like she was interested in what he was doing, basically to just screw him, screw him over in the end. So at the vault, Dottie ties up Howard, slaps him, and if Jenko points out that Howard has created weapons of destruction, Howard insists that midnight oil should never should never have been used, and the Russian explains that he saw the gas when it was released, and he was only spared because he was wearing a gas mask. Soldiers died, including Evgenko's brother, and since then, Evgenko has been focused on Howard, and Howard tells him to kill it and think he deserves it, but asks him to leave innocent people out of it, and Evgenko says that he has no intention of killing him, but plans to make him suffer. So, he asks if Howard feels guilt, remorse, but figures that he doesn't allow kindness to cloud his vision, and Howard insists that he isn't a bad person. Evgenko tells him that he is because it's the only way he could succeed, and he starts hypnotizing Howard. And he telling him that his guilt destroys him. Howard falls under a jungle spell. And I was surprised it actually worked, but it does. And the psychiatrist tells him to focus, takes him back to his grace regret, the thing he would change. And you know what I like about this, guys? If this was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., this would have been a three-episode thing. This would have been the cliffhanger of an episode. And this is not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though, because Agent Carter is so much more fast-paced. And I love that about Agent Carter. Kind of made me feel like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. should be this fast-paced. It really should. I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., First half was kind of slow, but then it really picked up towards the end. I definitely feel like the second half's going to be awesome, but first half was kind of slow. So a soldier says they found Steve, and Peggy asked him to bring Steve back alive as a nearby airplane starts up, and Peggy and the others arrive at an airfield just as Howard takes off in the plane. But of course, we know that Howard's hypnotized, so whatever he's doing is not the right thing. So he's unaware of what he's really doing, because he's under this hypnosis and everything. So, Sousa confirms that Howard will reach Times Square in 10 minutes, and Jarvis points out that Roger listened to reason at the end, and 
Peggy tells him to get a plane ready, and Jack warns that they'll have to shoot Howard down over the water, and Jarvis confirms that he's the only one who can fly a plane, and Peggy tells the others to help Jarvis get the plane ready. So Peggy goes to get the airplane radio room, armed with a shotgun, sees Jenko and Dottie inside, monitoring Howard's progress. She orders them to surrender, stops Dottie when she reaches for her gun. Dottie kicks it out, knocking the rifle away, attacks her, throwing her across the room. You know what I liked? I didn't like there was like some big reveal, oh my god, Dottie's the one that's doing this. I liked that it wasn't like that, because she knew it was her. She knew that Dottie, because of course, you know, Dottie made Peggy unconscious and everything, so she knew there was something going on with Dottie, so I like that she wasn't really surprised. So Jarvis hesitates and admits to Jack that he's never shot a man down before. And Jack assures him that if Peggy stops with Jenko, that Jarvis won't have a fire as a shot. So Dottie draws a knife and Peggy uses a drape as a weapon. She knocks the Russian killer aside, tries to get on the radio, but Dottie knocks her away and tells Jenko away. She then grabs a bat and says that she used to be jealous of girls like Peggy. And Peggy fights back, but Dottie beats her down and saying that she can be anyone she wants. Dottie misses. She thought Peggy would be better, and Peggy kicks her through the window. She falls to her death, and Dottie is dead. So, that was an awesome way to die. Awesome stuff we got with Dottie, but now Dottie is dead. So, I mean, am I upset that Dottie died? No, because she was she was a, a villain, but she was badass, I have to say. She was the most badass character on the show, and she was just awesome to watch. So Peggy calls Jack and Susan, tells him that if Jenko has escaped and then gets on the radio and tries to get through to Howard, he insists that there are no civilians where he is, and Jack searches the hangar and hears someone ahead. So he advances carefully, finds discarded Spanner, and if Jenko clubs him unconscious from behind, I have to say, I thought Jack was going to die in this episode. I do have to say that. I thought Jack or Sousa um, or Jarvis, one of them, was going to die in this episode because just the focus we had on them. Also, I love the rivalry between Sousa and Jack, how when uh, Sousa came out of his um, whole thing where he tried to kill Jack, he's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't want to kill him any more than I usually do. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. So Sousa orders him to step away or he will shoot, and if Jenko insists that he won't shoot an unarmed man and telling um, Sousa that he's virtuous, and Sousa tries to block his voice, but Jenko offers him to help him overcome his pain and tells him to focus. And I'm like, oh no, Sousa, do not fall for it. I don't, don't do this. Don't do this, Sousa. So Howard tells Peggy that if Jenko showed him now to bring, how to bring Steve back, and if Jenko t continues telling um, Sousa that his co-workers see him as half a man, and he knows how Sousa feels about Peggy, and says they can change that if Daniel, if uh, Sousa focuses. So if Jenko tells Sousa to shoot Jack as the agents wake up, and Sousa aims at Jack, who tries to get through to Jack, and Jenko tells Daniel to shoot him after after a moment, Sousa pistol whips Jenko, removes the earplugs that he's wearing, and that was an insane scene when he was about to like shoot Jenko. That was intense as ever. And Howard refused to turn the plane around, of course, because he's still under the hypnosis, saying that he's done talking. Jarvis comes on the line saying that he has Howard in his sights and they are one mile away from land, and he asks Peggy if he should take the shot, and Peggy hesitates, and Jarvis repeats his question, warning that they're out of time, and Peggy tells him to wait until she gives the order, and Howard says that he can see Steve ahead and he can fix everything, and admits that Project Rebirth was one thing that he's done that has brought good into the world. And Peggy says that she loves Steve and they have to let him go. Howard starts to come out of it, saying that Steve was good before he got a hold of him. He realizes where he is, and Peggy tells Jarvis to bring Howard home. So I'm glad that he got out of the hypnosis, because I thought that it was going to be like that the whole episode, but luckily he got out of it, so I was happy about that. So Peggy goes to the hangar, discovers that Dottie is gone, and there's a trail of blood leading away, and Sousa and Jack leave a Jenko away while Howard complains that uh, Jarvis was going to shoot him down. And Howard thanks Peggy and asks about if Jenko, and Peggy says that they'll find a permanent way to silence him. Because they have to find a way to take him down, obviously. So she missed that Dottie escapes, and, How and Howard finally remembers the name she was using with him. And because, you know, he didn't remember what it was and everything, so... Come morning, Peggy returns to SSR headquarters, and all the agents applaud her. She's back at SSR, she's not gone from SSR anymore, which is great. And Jack and Sousa ask if she'll be staying with the SSR, and Peggy jokingly says that she just came back to pick up her paycheck, and Senator Walt Cooper comes in to personally command Jack and his team, and he assumes that Jack is responsible, and Jack says that he did what he needed what needed to be done. Basically, Jack seems like he's going to take over now. It seems like Jack is going to take Roger's place and basically become the head of SSR. So Peggy and J Sousa look on, and Sousa goes to tell Cooper what really happened, and Peggy says it doesn't really bother her, and she doesn't need anyone else's approval. Sousa hesitates and suggests that they can get a drink that night, and Peggy asks for a rain check, saying that he she has to meet a friend, and Daniel turns away, and Sousa turns away, 
And uh, it kind of sad with Zeus. I mean, definitely, you can tell that Zeus and Peggy, he really does like her. But at this point, that's not what she's focused on right now. So you really do feel bad for Zeus. I personally felt really bad for Zeus in that scene. I'm like, oh, I really want Zeus and Peggy together. I really do want these two together. I like them together. And I think in season two, if there's a season two, definitely these two need to get together. Because again, as I said, Peggy, we know, was married to someone. And a lot of people suspect that Susa was the guy she was married to. So I kind of feel like Peggy and Susa were together. And I really do want them together. But we'll see what happens there. And next season, I guess. So Peggy takes Angie to, and Angie's back in the picture. Now, I thought she was going to tell Angie what was really going on, but Angie still does not know what exactly is going on here. Because she takes Angie to one of Howard's private penthouses, and Jarvis tells her that Howard has offered the place to Angie and Peggy for as long as they need a, res a residence. And Angie goes off to call her mother, and Peggy says that Jarvis must be relieved to return to his normal duties. And he misses that he is, but tells Peggy that he'd be honored to assist her, which is great to see. I really do love the team-up of Jarvis and Peggy. It's, one of my, it's been one of my favorite parts of the show. It's always been one of my favorite parts of the show, and I've, I've always loved it. I think they those two just work great together. He plans to destroy all the weapon technology, believing that no government can be trusted with it. And Jarvis gives Peggy the vial of Steve's blood on Howard's behalf and explains that Howard doesn't know what happened to it. And the butler says that Howard doesn't own his, inte own his integrity and there's only one person in the world who knows what to do with the blood, and that's Peggy. And this is such a well-end scene. I mean, just the music that was playing in this scene, you can finally see that Peggy is overcoming Steve's death all season. She's been grieving over it. And she goes to the Brooklyn Bridge, pours the blood into the water below. She says goodbye to Steve and... That really starts the next chapter of the show, which is going to be her moving on from Steve. And, of course, we know that Steve is alive, but as we know in Captain Dark Winter Soldier, she moved on without him, and she had all this time without him. So there still is more story to tell there. While that does seem like a good ending, there's definitely more story to tell, especially the end of this episode, which there better be a second season at this part. Because a prison guard leads a gag of Jenko into his cell. Once he's gone, a man the shadows tells of Jenko that the food is quite good, and it's Arnim Zola. Now... I didn't know too much about Arnim Zola. However, while watching that this episode, I looked up Arnim Zola's name. Turns out that he is one of Captain America's greatest enemies, if not his greatest enemy. And he will take down Captain America, and he's probably going to take down Peggy and a bunch of people, so they definitely should be worried. And here's what I kind of feel like is going to happen now. That all the people that Captain America, that were Captain America's villains are going to go against the SSR agents. And if that's true, that's going to be awesome to see. So Arm Zola steps out of the shadows, assures of Jenko that given a little peace and quiet, new visions will arise, and Zola says that he knows all about Jenko's work and suggests that they collaborate. He hands of Jenko pencil and paper and assures him that he is in an American prison and America is the land of opportunity, and that's how the episode ends. So that was an awesome cliffhanger. We know that Jenko and uh, Zola are going to team up together, and I cannot wait to see what happens next. But I have to say, guys, this episode was absolutely amazing. So much intense scenes. The action scenes this episode were awesome. I really want to talk about this season overall because I have to say, what did Agent Carter do that Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't? Well, Agent Carter doesn't have as many characters to focus on. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. has many, many characters that you need to focus on. It's an ensemble show, and sometimes it can get too much, but Agent Carter never did that. Agent Carter found a way to balance all those storylines out perfectly, which Ains of S.H.I.E.L.D. had a problem with, and I think Agent Carter does that perfectly. They balance out everything really well. They None, none of the storylines felt rushed or anything. Everything in this episode just worked. Everything was great. Everything was fantastic to see. Seeing uh, Jack and Dan, you know, seeing Jack and Sousa team up, That was that, seeing Jack and Sousa butt heads, that was really funny to see. Sousa undergoing the uh, Midnight thing, Midnight City, whatever it's called. That was really cool to see. I love the focus we got on Howard in this episode. Definitely feel like we're going to see a lot more of Howard next season. I feel like Howard's going to become a main character after the season because he just had so much focus this season. Um, Jack and Sousa were such great characters. We didn't know anything about them, and they were great characters. My only complaint is Roger. Roger, I think... I don't know if he's still under the hypnosis or what he's really doing, but something is definitely going on with Roger. We don't know really what's going on with him. We didn't see anything with him, but I think that Roger's kind of out of the picture now because Jack is the head of SSR. Uh, is Peggy going to stay at SSR? I don't know. I think it's assuming she is. Uh, Sousa, I really did feel bad for Sousa in this episode because it really seems like he does want to be with Peggy. So hopefully Peggy does realize that Sousa does want to be with her, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, the death of Dottie, I thought, was awesome. Great to see that Dottie dead, but even though I love seeing her character. Uh, Angie, does Angie know Peggy's secret? I think she does, but of course, you know, if the last time they talked to her about it, she had no idea what they were talking about, so I don't know if Angie knows exactly what's going on with Peggy. I think she has an idea, but I don't know if she fully knows. What do you guys think? Do you think she knows what's going on with Peggy? Is she not telling her that she knows? 
I don't know. I definitely feel like she has an inkling of what's going on. But I don't think that um, Angie knows the full details. I think she's going to find out more definitely in the next season. We'll see what happens there. Seeing Peggy moving ahead with Steve's blood was so well done. Absolutely love that. All the story arcs this season, I absolutely loved. I really this this show got me to care a lot more about Peggy Carter. I cared about her, but this show got me to care so much for her, and I really hope it gets renewed for season two. There's no way that's not going to, because I know it's going to, because Marvel does that. Uh, because Marvel actually makes a final decision. I don't know if you guys know this, but even if they don't renew for season two, most likely there's going to be a season two because Marvel gets to make a decision of do we want to keep this show or not. That's Marvel's thing. Marvel gets to decide, do we want to do this? Do we want to continue this? Because Marvel, of course, this is all connected to the movies. So, how do I feel it's going to connect to Age of Ultron? <clears throat> I kind of feel like we're going to... Definitely, I heard people say this, we're going to see a lot more of Black Widow's past, and I think that's why we saw Dottie, that was the importance of her character, was to see that not everyone in the Black Widow project is good. And some people are bad, and I kind of feel like uh, Natasha went through that same thing. But we'll have to see what happens in Age of Ultron. Definitely, that's going to be interesting to see. I definitely feel this is going to connect to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., definitely. I don't know how, but I definitely feel like it's going to. Because, I mean, we saw Agent Carter, you know, we saw Peggy in flashbacks in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which really got us set up for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, are, possibly, are we possibly going to see flashbacks from Agent Carter in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I definitely am interested in see if we're going to see that. That's going to be really cool to see. If we do, I hope that does happen. Uh, as I said, I really like seeing Jack take over SSR. That was really cool to see. Uh, Jarvis working with Peggy was great. I'm very happy that they're still teaming up because I love those two team up together. They work so well together. Brovo, guys, was an amazing finale. I absolutely loved it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will actually be... It's going to be one of two videos. Someone wants me to review the Power Rangers short film, and I definitely am going to review it. That person that told me to review it, don't worry. I am going to review it. I'm going to find time to review it. I know everyone's been reviewing it and talking about it. I had no idea when up, but I need to see this NSFW version of Power Rangers. It's probably hilarious, but I definitely need to see it. Or for my review of just So it's either going to be for that or for my review of Justified. So I will see you guys for that. Okay? Bye. Also, let me know what you guys thought of Agent Carter. Are you going to miss Agent Carter? Do you want Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to start up? I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. looks awesome. I saw the promo for second half of the season. I can't wait for it. But at the same time, I'm really going to miss Agent Carter. I've had a great time with it. It's been an awesome show. It's always going to be better than Agent Shield. It's going to be better than Agent Shield ever will be. It's better than it. It's better than it. Because here's the thing, guys. Agent Carter was a placeholder for Agent Shield. That's all it was. It was a placeholder. So they didn't really have to be that good for it to be for it to, us to stick around with it because it was a placeholder. It was so much better than it could have been. <clears throat> and it was so much better than it should have been. Because... Who would have thought that Angel Carter would have been better <clears throat> than Angel Shield? Especially when Angel Shield had such an awesome finale, and this was better than it. I have to say, this was, I don't know if this is better than the Angel Shield finale, but I still love the show so much more than Angel Shield. I definitely do. I'm so going to miss it. And that's why I think Agent Carter just succeeds so well, because it was so much better than it should have been. And I think that's why I'm going to miss it so much, because it, it, it just works so, so well, and I loved about the show. That's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be, as I said, for the Power Rangers short film or for my review Justified. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.